On this episode of IFAF, Idaho Falls and Festival of Trees. I do love like punctuating the end of a sentence with a Because like, have you ever gotten out of bed and it feels like you're crawling out of a vat of slime like the Matrix? And I'm going to do it again too. <laughs> a midnight snack today. <laughs> so I have all these extra layers that you don't have, not to mention two fat stores on my chest. <laughs> do you think we'll make it through the rest of the show without crashing? IFAF, Idaho Falls infotainment talk show with Mike Nelson and Carly Morgan. A lot of posts on Facebook about Starlink. The this everybody mm-hmm. every time the Starlink satellites come through, you see like ten posts, a dozen posts going. Right. Hey, what is this? What's going on? <laughs> what strange sign in the sky is this? It's like Rango barking out the window every time he sees a dog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, what do you think it is? Yeah. A thing that's clearly a foreign object circling the earth? And you know what? I have yet <sighs> to ever see them myself on purpose. Uh-huh. Could we get a, like a schedule or something? I know we have schedules for eclipses mm-hmm. and paths of totality. Can we get a schedule for the Starlink satellites? There's so gotta be. Be there next time. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm sure there is one. I mean, they're set. I mean, I it's imagine, just astrophysics. Yeah. I imagine they <laughs> roll in a particular pattern. Yeah. And- at night, you see them. And in fact, I wonder how many times they come over at three, four o'clock in the morning and nobody sees them. Oh, I mean, probably all the time. Right. Yeah, I have I have to assume that they're circling the earth at least once a day. I mean, I would think 20 times a day. Yeah. Like that's how many true. times, how many times do they, you know, cross in the daytime? Right. That's a good point. I almost think, but, but now that it's getting darker sooner, we'll mm-hmm. see. We'll have a longer window before going to bed to see them. That's true. That's a good point. If that makes sense. It does. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Good old musky. <laughs> I still can't believe Twitter really is X. And they still haven't, uh, because we just joined to post our videos. and they Which still I was against, by the way. <laughs> if you type in X.com, it's an immediate redirect to Twitter.com. Mm-hmm. So you still see Twitter. You still see the name Twitter all over the place. Right. I hate inconsistent branding. Right. How many times have we talked about this? Well, and also, Me and you and Elon. Yeah. <laughs> we sat down together. Yeah, as if. <laughs> <laughs> well, and also, like, why bother changing it? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. Twitter was good as it was. Yeah. You know, you can't call it Xing. It's tweeting. Right. You know? And what do you do? I, I sent an X. You sent yeah. the what to your X? You, you know? Yeah. 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 I mean, I get it. Although, I didn't think... The um, what's I can stand for? I have no idea. I C A A N, but they're like no idea. The international conglomerate of internet domain names and stuff. Oh, crazy! Okay, and they hmm. decide what can be a domain name and what cannot. Mm-hmm. And I didn't think they were giving away any one-letter domain names. Right. Like I wonder who owns Y dot com or Z dot com, W dot com, A dot com. <laughs> right. Yeah. You can find us everywhere uh, with our handle IFAF pod. IFAF pod is that right? Yeah, yeah. That's the, it's the same on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, I, X. Um, See, that's exactly why TikTok. you shouldn't have bothered renaming it. Yeah. Like, why are you going through all of that effort for people to not call it that? And if you don't want to remember any of that, IFAFpod.com mm-hmm. will take you to where you need to go. Our link tree. Why don't we start with a couple of signs in town, can we? Yes. Here's the first one. (laughs) It's so hard not to say name of your sex tape. (laughs) Modern Home, uh, for for a brief, brief moment, was Modern Ho. Oh, so they got it fixed already? (laughs) They got it fixed already. I mean, to be fair, that's one you have to do. Yeah. (laughs) Like, I I guarantee that they sent an email to corporate that was like, critical, please send a handyman immediately. (laughs) Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Because, I mean, even if if the HO would have gone out and the ME would have been on still, no one would have cared. That probably would have stayed that way for like two years. You know, but because it was modern ho, yeah, it got taken care of like that. You know, <laughs> I remember the the last station I worked at. Uh, we had the logo glued onto the wall, mm-hmm. and the first two letters of the station name came off, so it looked like assy. Uh, <laughs> and <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> like I, I got a quick selfie with it, and then alerted management. <laughs> <laughs> that's good, and you know, and that's exactly what you should do. Yeah. And let's talk about this intentional one at the corner of Holmes and Anderson Mm -hmm. for Advanced Home Services. Check this one out. 
If you're just listening, it's the poop emoji followed by the word happens. <laughs> Which is such a good way of doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Shit happens, and advanced home services can take care of that. You could even say crap happens. <laughs> yes, you could. That if would you don't want to cuss. Yeah. That if would... you're a good upstanding citizen. <laughs> <laughs> My dad can do that.com is their website. Uh huh. Yeah. Pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Great job, guys. You are IFAF this week. Good, so, ad- good advertising matters. Yeah, we're just going to take care of that right up front. Mm-hmm. Crisp high five, 21 finger gun salute, chef's kiss to you. <laughs> Advanced home services for your super creative billboard. Weren't we just talking about poop emojis in the last episode? Gosh, I think we were. <laughs> and how like they're everywhere and everyone uses them and it drives me nuts. I just want to know, why did they decide to... Um, Make it smile? Anthropomorphize it. Yeah. Why did they give it eyes and then... Not like a grumpy look. Right. But like Which a- Which really, a poop should be grumpy. Like it should be. Yeah. Isn't that- Oh, ne- we're just getting crude mm. immediately. Isn't that- I'm pretty sure I heard an old Navy SEAL guy, coworker person, mm-hmm. refer to it as punching a grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, yeah, I think that's a more accurate way of putting it. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I mean, maybe because it's so relieved to be out of your butt. I think <laughs> I think we need to uh, I think we need some diversity. I think we need a happy one and a sad one. There we go. Because sometimes yeah. when you're talking about that, you're talking about the sad poops. Kind of like like when you go to a movie that you're pretty sure is going to be bad. Like you and I watched Five Nights at Freddy's. And yeah. we'd kind of heard that it was not very good, mm-hmm. you know, especially if you weren't into the game and stuff. Yeah. And, you know, we kind of just watched it out of morbid morbid curiosity. Like, at that point, I'd be like, hey, you want to watch Five Nights at Freddy's <laughs> poop emoji of the comedy and tragedy masks? <laughs> yeah. I'm not very emoji-y. Yeah, I don't do a lot of them. I still do like the typed out emojis, like the colon parentheses. You still do? You haven't noticed that? That's classic. That's like old school. That's like late 90s. Oh, I know. Well, that's because that's when I learned how to type (laughs) or text. You know, I wonder if you haven't noticed because we mostly communicate over Facebook Messenger and they automatically fix it for you. Oh, they do. Okay. They do, yeah. Trixie Hobbitses. Because honestly, I never bother going to look for emojis unless it will like genuinely make the conversation better. Yeah. But nine times out of 10, my words are enough, babes. Well, and, <laughs> and I I do love like punctuating the end of a sentence with a... Oh, I think I think the wonky emoji is my fave. The, That's a good one. The sort of... Oh, guy. Yeah, yeah. I don't even with, know like, how the to... Cra- a yeah. little crazy eyes. <laughs> one eye's bigger than the other. He's mm-hmm. slightly askew and the tongue is hanging out. That seems very up your alley. Probably because I we, I have a lot of crazy conversations with my friends. Right, right. You know? And I sometimes think, clients. I think the one that I use the most is probably the sparkle emoji. Oh, okay. You know, because sometimes like there's just an emphasis that, that puts on a word that you can't do any other way. Okay. Do you mean the guy with the stars in his eyes or do you mean the sparkly, like the little, like the, the three, three little, little stars? sparkles. Yeah, yeah. Three little sparkles. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Unicorns, mm-hmm. glitter, and rainbows. Right. That would be the glitter. <laughs> yes. That'd be the glitter. Right. Uh-huh. Got it. Yeah. Well, we're off to a terrible start. <laughs> <laughs> like that's the kind of emotion, like that's the emoji that I'd put around like, oh yeah, I have sparkle, crippling depression sparkle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, something like that. Yeah. It's only crippling depression if it comes from the crippling region of France. Otherwise it's just sparkling depression. Is that it? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah. Basically. Speaking of shit. <laughs> what? <laughs> what is up with Denny's in Idaho Falls being permanently closed now? Oh my gosh, I know. What a bunch of shit. Well, and also, it was so sudden. Yeah. You know, like, there was no warning, yep. no, like, going out of business sale or anything like that, which I guess you can't really do with food, but you know what I mean? Well, and I don't really have my finger on the pulse of uh, diners here in East Idaho. Right. Exactly. But, uh, you know, so I'm not in that scene, so maybe everybody else did see it coming? Maybe. But I feel like I would have heard about that. Right. It yeah. was just, I saw the post one day with the sign, here it is, Denny's mm-hmm. permanently closed. Right. No explanation. And we've already talked about this. There's a group in Rexburg. So I'm a member mm-hmm. of a few Facebook groups, because mm-hmm. I just kind of like to see what's going on, what people are talking about. And they're funny. Right. Yeah, groups are for people with senses of humor. I think so. Yeah. And uh, which is why, you know, we will post to a couple of groups here and there. Mm-hmm. We'll post this show. Hey, thought you guys might like this. There's a group called I Love Life in Rexburg, and I'm a member of that. 
And then along came another group, I Hate Life in Rexburg. <laughs> and then they recently changed their name to I Hate Life in Rexburg and also Denny's. <laughs> because I guess the Denny's in Rexburg always has a horrible wait, mm-hmm. 30 minutes or more. It's like you're in a big town. Well, and I think that it also has caused like some traffic issues and stuff because there are okay. so many people around there all <laughs> okay. of a sudden, you know? And so there's an Idaho Falls uncensored group and they changed their name to Idaho Falls or Idaho Falls Not Safe for Other Groups, uh-huh. I think. And then they changed their name to Idaho Falls Not Safe for local Other Local Groups. And also, we strongly dislike Denny's. <laughs> so Denny's is getting no love anywhere in yeah. East Idaho right now. Which is kind of funny because at one point they had a really good social media. Like their Twitter or something was really funny. Yeah. You they know? took a cue. I think Wendy's was the first. Wendy's was. Wendy's Twitter was the first mm-hmm. social media account to really just go off the wall and people loved it. Right. Yeah. And then, yeah, Denny's followed. Well, and if I'm not mistaken, and I could be, but I'm pretty sure one of my favorite content creators, Sarah Shower, once was the person who ran Denny's, and okay. she was the one that did all of the really wacky stuff on there. Uh-huh. Uh, and then she uh, didn't work for them anymore for some reason. I'm not sure what happened. But yeah, but I kind of wonder if she was the one that like really made them notorious because she was funny. I mean, Denny's was a pretty notorious diner American Diner brand. Well, but I mean on their social media. Oh, you mean, okay, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I I can't imagine a multi-million dollar corporation cringingly handing over their Twitter account to mm-hmm. a 21-year-old snarky person. <laughs> but but kudos and props for doing right. that. Well, yeah. cuz cuz Wendy's did it first and they saw how good it was. And I think Wendy's is still doing it. They are. I still see screenshots. I mean, you know we all just flip between four different websites these days. Right, yeah. And those four different websites have screenshots from of either- the other three. The other three <laughs> websites or some of the lesser used mm-hmm. websites. Yeah, like my favorite Tumblr, which also I'll admit I need to be better about being more active on our social media, but also I work three jobs, so- yeah. I think I have a good excuse. Yeah, and you're you're changing jobs too. You're I am just I'm in time for the retail. holidays. I know. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> Your coworkers, are you going to stick it out through Black Friday though? I'm going back for Black Friday. I'm technically uh-huh. starting my new job that week, uh-huh. um, but I'm going back for Black Friday, and I'm even thinking of maybe taking like maybe doing like half days or leaving like an hour or two early before work ends to go to my other job and help them out. Cause I'm just really worried about them. Um, you're a dedicated person. You are, you're a, mm-hmm. and you're a, uh, do you mind if I call you like a mother hen? You have, I am, yeah. you have a nurturing instinct, mm-hmm. not only for the store, but for the people there. Yeah. Yeah. And you I want mean, to see them succeed. Yeah. I mean, like uh, two of my coworkers just went through, they moved in together and, uh, you know, they were having a really hard time finding a house before uh, the other one had a lease that was, uh, coming to an end and they weren't going to renew it because they were remodeling it or something. And so she was like desperately looking for a house. And I was like, listen, I know you've got two dogs, but if you board them, you can stay with me for a month. We'll help you find a house. Like we'll figure it out, dude. <laughs> like I, I really am pretty dedicated yeah. to, to my tribe, to that's, my, yeah, to my people. That's very cool. Yeah. Very cool. I mean, she would have been sleeping on my couch and that would have sucked for her, <laughs> but it's better than being homeless. Yeah, for sure. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Three follow-ups, and the third one is snack time. Yay, I love that. <laughs> okay. You know I love a little snacky. We were speculating about how much, because we're total idiots and don't do any fact-checking. We are our own fact-checkers. <laughs> uh, speculating about how much of the year is daylight saving time. And so we looked it up. It's 34 weeks. That's 65% of the year. Too damn long, if you ask me. Imagine being upset about (laughs) circumstances beyond your control for 65% of any given year. Oh, that's awful. Oh, and the thing on the corner of uh, Park and A at the Colonial Theater is called a... A swan. Yeah. Yeah, they call it the swan. Yeah. At least everyone who works there does. So we're going to say that that's the correct terminology. And that's what they say on their website. It's mm-hmm. the swan. It's the swan that lights up mm-hmm. and is all uh, neon and glittery and pulsing mm-hmm. on nights of performances. Yeah. Okay. Third and finally on our list of follow-ups, I love friends and I love snacks. <laughs> Kevin, the most interesting man in the world, my buddy who lives in Manhattan. And and 
if you're wondering why I call him the most interesting man in the world, since let's have a Kevin-centric segment here for just a moment. <laughs> I love that. The guy was interesting in high school. Mm-hmm. He had old records and synthesizers, and he, he was one of the first people I knew who got a sampling keyboard. Whoa. You know, the one that Gene uh, uses dog barks and farts yeah, uh-huh. on in Bob's Burgers. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> so he had all that stuff like in the late 80s. And then, you know, he went to work for... Okay, so really, he had rich parents. Uh, you know, maybe they worked at the site. <laughs> they did live by Totfus Park. Yeah. Um, I don't think they were hurting. Yeah. So he went to work for... And Kevin, I'm just going to tell this story, and I could be wrong. So <laughs> you're welcome to fact check me. He went to work for oh a little company you may have heard of, Sun microsystems who developed the java technology for the internet oh wow in the early days of the internet he went to work for them and then he left i remember him telling me that he was leaving to join a a small startup called portal communications and i think they didn't like have enough money to pay him so they gave him stock options at like 30 cents a piece and then when they went public they were worth 30 bucks a piece oh wow okay so he was able to like, I think he bought like a Toyota 4Runner mm-hmm. and a house in San Francisco that was as wide as a garage plus <laughs> 10 inches, but four stories tall. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And then the bubble burst. <laughs> God, that was probably really hard to furnish. And then he like lived in Japan and <laughs> Iceland of all places. And I've heard great things about Iceland. If I left here, I'd move to Iceland. Right? Yeah. And you know that island is so small that the residents there have an app that uh, you before you hook up, uh-huh. if you're on a date. Oh, so you can check to see if you're related. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. If we went there, it would be such hot commodities. Because <laughs> they'd be like, oh, I don't even have to check if we're related. <laughs> you'd be fresh meat Yeah, is what you'd be. Oh, I'd love that. Yeah. Wow. And you know, th- th- I thought this was interesting, too. We could um, each have a harem. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right? <laughs> I mean, I think people Not would that be, I want one, but I could. <laughs> they would be lining up yeah, at yeah. your door for that. And there's yeah, all that volcanic such, activity and that's stuff. That's such an American way of thinking. <laughs> like, oh, I'm going to go to a foreign country and they're going to love me because I'm an American. No, they're going to hate you because you're an American. Well, hang on. <laughs> I, I mean, I know you've seen Love Actually, but that's, that's one of the seven plot points in that movie is right. the Brit who wants to move to America mm-hmm. because chicks dig the British accent. Well, and it's not wrong. <laughs> right. But it doesn't work in reverse. If you go to England with an American accent, they're going to be like, oh, you. Oh, okay. What yeah. are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you go back to the country we left you in? <laughs> this is interesting, and I'm not sure what to think of it mm-hmm. since we're on the topic of Iceland and we're digressing, we're sidebarring from the Kevin story. <laughs> um, but in Iceland, do you know that they've completely eradicated Down syndrome? Yes, I had heard that. I thought that was really fascinating. Basically, in a generation, so Mm -hmm. like since the year 2000, when they got the technology to identify Down syndrome in the womb, Mm -hmm. they would tell the mother and have the mother make the decision. It wasn't like a state-sponsored thing or anything. Yeah, they didn't force anything. But yeah, in one generation now, Mm -hmm. because of the mother's decision, Mm -hmm. Down syndrome has been eradicated. Which does have some eugenic undertones. Exactly. But That's the part I'm not so sure about. Like, okay, if we yeah. can do that, then are we, you know. Yeah. Was Hitler's idea about a master race just a hundred years too early? I mean, I think that's a bit of a stretch. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, but, you know. But, but I get it. But if if there was a dictatorship and that was forced mm-hmm. and he wanted nothing but a nation of blonde haired blue eyes. Yeah. It. It could happen at this point. Yeah, that's true, because we can actually choose traits. Yeah, so that's kind of scary. Designer babies. <laughs> Sorry to put that in your bio, Kev. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway, and Kevin, you may remember, is the one who wore the Carol Baskin <laughs> ugly Christmas sweater yeah. that we showed a picture of in Merry last Christmas episode. Merry Christmas to everyone, but that bitch Carol Baskin. <laughs> <laughs> we got to talking about Kit Kats mm-hmm. and Kev... Just so happens to have a connection uh, to some European Kit Kats. <laughs> I, I, that's just in his back pocket, of course. Now you, you might, know. <laughs> okay, and that's why he's the most interesting man in the world. Exactly. <laughs> so we have here 
We're going to have a little taste test for snack time. Mm -hmm. We have here an American Kit Kat uh -huh. that you've known your entire life, uh, and they are distributed by Hershey's. And then we have here a European Kit Kat, and they are distributed by Nestle. I like the Nestle packaging better. You do? It's a little darker and a well, little and more- Well, and I like that it's shiny. Shiny. Yeah. See, that's where I'd put sparkles around it. Shiny. Now, check your stash <laughs> over here. You've got the same thing I have. Yes. You've Ooh. got an American one and a Euro one. Ooh, la la. Yes, I do. Okay. Yes, I do, la la. <laughs> Brief history of Kit Kat. I believe the company that created it, it's a British company. So so Kit Kat is a, a UK product mm -hmm. um, called Roundtree, I think, in 1935. Which also, can I just point out, Kit Kat sounds British. It does. You know? In fact, I you think there was, a Kit Kat? there was a dish <laughs> made of mutton- like a few hundred years earlier, uh -huh. called the Kit Kat. Really? I don't think it had cat in it, but I mean, I hope who not. Knows? That'd be a bummer. <laughs> right? Who knows what they yeah. did in the yeah. 1600s? Well, I mean, if Mrs. Lovett was running it, then no, because she can't catch a cat. <laughs> the best pies in London. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so in 1970, Kit Kat had Hershey uh, begin distributing them in the United States. And then somehow, like in 88, Nestle got the world right, worldwide rights to Kit Kat. Oh, interesting. So pretty much, you know, we think we in the U.S. know what's up. Um, but the rest of the world, everybody outside the U.S. thinks that Kit Kat is a Nestle product. Interesting. Now, wait a minute. What are you, how are you eating yours? Okay. I'm going to eat it like this. Right. Although, did you know Kim K has like a special way of eating a Kit Kat? Really? Mm-hmm. I couldn't. Not that it matters or anyone should care. Kim K care less <laughs> right? about her Kit Kat <laughs> consumption. But yeah, so she eats like the outside part first, which also this chocolate is so much better. Mm. But yeah, she like eats the top and the sides first. Okay. I guess. I don't know. Mm. I don't remember. But yeah. Mm. Okay. We've Holy had crap. one Nestle finger. That's really good chocolate. I don't know if it's really good. Mm. It's good. It's candy bar good. Oh, yeah. All right. Now we're going to try the U.S. Mm -hmm. And this should be nothing to write home about. It should taste like a Kit. We all know what a Kit I Kat tastes like. I feel like that, like. that uh, wafer is airier than an average Kit Kat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like that you go with the bunny method. <laughs> I did. Mm -hmm. I just... Jammed it in and fed it through. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, just doing little chomps. There is a slightly different taste, isn't there? Oh, no, I haven't gotten to it yet. Would you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, and I don't mm. want to plant any thoughts in your head. I don't want to taint the sample. I already know what I want to say about this. I would say that the Hershey's distributed Kit Kat is a little more milk chocolatey. Mm -hmm. It's got a more vanilla undertone to it, too. Oh, okay. Like, it's got a much heavier vanilla note to it than the uh, Nestle Kit Kat. What would happen? I'm going to feed one in the left side and one in the right side. <laughs> hmm. Let's try this. I might like the American one better. Just because I do tend to like a much lighter chocolate. <laughs> you look ridiculous. <laughs> Can you fit them all in? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I've just had a snack accident. <laughs> and I'm going to do it again too. A midnight snack today. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I have a preference. I do. But I'm grateful for um, Kevin's Kit Kats. Oh, me too. <laughs> which, do, which do you prefer? Do you prefer the Euro Trash version? I prefer the American version. Uh huh. It's just a, first off, I don't actually like <laughs> chocolate that much. I prefer white chocolate. Okay, right. So I really like lighter, more vanilla type flavors, like cakey flavors. Yeah. Like if I'm going to go out and get an ice cream, it's probably going to be like a cake batter ice cream. Or lately, I've been just crazy about this uh, circus animals ice cream that I found at Brolem's. <laughs> okay, yeah. Oh, it's so good. It's got like the little circus animal cookies in it and everything. Oh. And the ice cream itself tastes like, even if it didn't have the circus animals in right. it, it tastes like the frosting of a circus animal cookie. Oh, it's so good. But that's like my favorite kind of like sweet flavor, you know? So anything chocolatey, I'm not super into. And I feel like the American Kit Kat, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm about to have a snack spin. I'm yeah. going to choke on this thing. <laughs> yeah, chocolate like really does a number on the throat. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, but I like how much more vanilla flavored the um, American Kit Kat is. Although I do like the wafer of the European Kit Kat better. Okay. It's a little airier and I think a little like softer. I too am going to say I I prefer the American Kit Kat. Mm-hmm. So that's the clear winner here. We're both agreed on that. Yeah. Well, that was great. Thank you, Kevin. A lot of fun. Really appreciate you doing that. He was going to do it a few weeks back, uh-huh. but he said, dude, it's still like 70, 80 here. So I don't want to put them in the mail. Kind of like the Oreos we were talking about. Right, exactly. Yeah. We need to maybe check on ordering those custom Oreos again. I love that idea. But yeah, thanks, Kevin. That was really thoughtful and sweet of you. What a treat. Emphasis on the sweet. And so are you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Emphasis on the treat. <laughs> <laughs> what a snack you are, Kev. <laughs> Ooh la la. And it's just crazy. Like if you were from somewhere and you're no longer there and you want the stuff, you can just order it and have it in a couple of days. I know. Isn't that so nice? If I want a deep dish pizza from Chicago Mm -hmm. or a Vienna beef hot dog, like there are plenty of places here in Idaho Falls that say they have a Chicago dog. It's not hard to make, but they still mess it up. They'll put sweet relish on it or something. And- Fools. It, it blows my, or they won't put the celery salt on top. It mm. blows my mind how simple a Chicago okay. dog is to make. Mm-hmm. And and how often it gets messed up. Reputable sandwich slash hot dog joints mm-hmm. in town refuse to do it the right way. Do you think it's because they don't think that people around here will appreciate it the way that they need Why to? don't you fly to Chicago, have one, and then come taste one of your bastardizations <laughs> and 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 feel the disappointment of every single one of your customers who's expecting and hoping for something because you've named it that mm-hmm. too much too harsh no no okay. honestly not harsh enough i think they should go to hell <laughs> <laughs> okay let's we're sending gonna... them all to hell today <laughs> are you having one of those i hate everybody and everything days well i mean i have been working retail all day so yeah yeah okay all right how's the christmas shopping do people seem to be doing oh, it so many and <laughs> and the shop is so full of stuff mm-hmm. like corporate has just sent us Piles and piles and piles and piles of stuff. We don't have the shelf space for it all because there's so much inventory right now. And you've seen my place. I'm a minimalist. Oh yeah. And but but at Christmas time, I will make a. There, there's mm-hmm. a couple of corners that I will dedicate to. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, here's the presents. Here's the snacks. You know, it, it's right. okay to be a little cluttered at the holidays. Right. Right. But yeah, I get it. That's. Yeah. I mean, our shelves are going all the way up to our ceilings because that's the only way to fit all of it in there. Wow. Yeah. It's terrifying. So short people get like half the selection. (laughs) It's just no fair. Basically. It's discrimination. It is. It is. But that is why we have step stools. So. Do you think we'll make it through the rest of the show without crashing? Because I'm definitely feeling the sugar rush right now. Oh, no. We're going to be completely petered out by the end of this. But I'm pretty (laughs) sure... That uh, there's a crash coming on. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. No, I already feel mine. Okay. Speaking of shopping, Walmart has done something that I think is interesting. Yeah. They uh, are now open in the morning from 8 to 10 with a special format. As of November 10th, Mm -hmm. they're introducing mornings from 8 to 10 for, I don't know, neurodivergent people or, or people who just want, you know, seniors People who just want a more relaxed, low-key, quieter shopping experience. Mm-hmm. Um, and and they said, this isn't for a limited time. This is the plan moving forward. Mm-hmm. So it's not, I mean, maybe it is a gimmick, but it'll be interesting if Walmart's doing it to see how many other people, retailers follow suit. Right. The concept is basically this. You go in, all the TVs are on still images instead of moving images. They cut the overhead music. And they dim the lights. I like that, honestly. Because like when I wake up in the morning, if there's too much going on, I just don't like it. It's like, I'm too fresh to this world. Yeah. Okay. I can't handle any of that right now. (laughs) If you walk in and you're like, it's too early for this shit. Yeah. I think workplaces should do that too. Should have the lights dimmed in the morning. For their employees. I think so. And that's why I love LA like in June when they have their June gloom. Yeah. Because... Like, even though it's a major metropolitan area, the second largest one in the United States, mm-hmm. like, it feels like 
it feels like just a cold, rainy day. And then until until like noon, it burns off and then it's sunshiny and yay. Mm -hmm. But it gives you time to wake up. Mm -hmm. Right. Maybe that's why all the rock stars live in LA that get up at the crack of noon. (laughs) Right. You know, it makes sense too. Yeah. Because like, have you ever gotten out of bed and it feels like you're crawling out of a vat of slime like the Matrix? Every morning? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) No, but yeah. Like you just feel like a slug slinking out of its cocoon. I guess you'd be a caterpillar in this case, but also... Also, not because you'd be a butterfly by then, but you get the point. <laughs> I get the point. You know, <laughs> like there are so many mornings when I'm just wake up in a puddle of your own filth and then <laughs> like, go pull the cords out of your body and cough up a lung. Yeah, I'm just not a person in the morning. I'm not. Like yeah. it really takes me. Like this is a car that has to warm up before you can drive it. <laughs> you yes. Know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's why I like showering in the morning now because it gives me a little. It's sort of a transition. You know, it's like it's like a water birth. <laughs> you yeah. know, it's a, it's a nice transition. A lot of from metaphors here. A lot, <laughs> lot of metaphors. I'm but being I, so gross. No, but I get it. No, but it it, it wakes you up. Uh, my my right. routine is a protein shake, mm-hmm. and then I get the blood pump. And whether it's mm-hmm. walk around with some weights for a minute, but just something, and then hit mm-hmm. the shower. And then I, I'm pretty much awake. Yeah, no. Well, especially because I keep my bed so cozy. Because I've got my heated blanket on now, yeah. which is my favorite thing. <laughs> you keep your house at like 59 degrees yeah, and your bed at 104. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's crazy. It's the ideal way to live. Because <laughs> then you get into your nice cuddly bed and you get to be cozy and, <laughs> and safe there. But then you don't overheat, you know, because the rest of your house is nice and cool. So it, it sort of, you know, balances I, it out. I don't want to feel like I'm camping Inside my own home. Okay, but also you keep your house too hot. You can't wear, a, you can't put a blanket on in your house. And I like blankets. Let me tell you something. <sighs> Growing up, I lived in a household where the dad would make the kids put on winter coats in the winter. Mm-hmm. Instead of turning up the heat? Instead of turning up the heat. Okay, yeah, that's a little ridiculous. And I also got the, when I, every time I open the fridge, <laughs> what are you trying to do? Cool off the entire neighborhood? Mm-hmm. You know, I got that too. But- As an adult, I realized the difference between keeping, and I suppose it depends on the size of your house, the difference between keeping your house cold where to the point where people are complaining, Mm -hmm. family members are revolting, threatening (laughs) mutiny, and nice and comfy cozy is like 10 bucks a month. Yeah, you're right. Maybe 30. Mm Mm-hmm. What are the necessities in life? We've talked about this. The traditional ones are food, clothing, and shelter. And I would add to that transportation and communication. Mm -hmm. But let's go back to shelter for just a minute. Shelter isn't shelter if it's not what? Sheltering you from what? The elements. (laughs) Can I get a what? (laughs) No. (laughs) Okay, here's the thing, though. There's this really nice little middle ground in between those two things. Okay, the, you know, (laughs) having to put on your winter coat Uh and having it be perfect ambient temperature. And that's... Just a little cool. The That's li- if you're wearing a sweater, things are good. And I like wearing sweaters. First off, women just in general have to wear more layers than men do. Women have to wear bras and camisoles and stuff under their regular clothes. Oh, too. gotcha. Yeah. You know, so I have all these extra layers that you don't have, not to mention two fat stores on my chest <laughs> that really do retain a lot of heat. Yes. You know? You you get the From what I understand, with conversations with women on the 4th of July, yes, there's some sweat happening there. Some swoob. Some swoob. Yeah. Yeah, I get swass. Yeah. Yeah. It happens. (laughs) You know, I'm just saying, in general, I feel like I'm always running hotter than the people around me. And part of that is because I have gained a little bit of weight, which whenever I'm like 40 pounds lighter, no problem. Right now, kind of a problem. (laughs) But we've talked about this. You and I both run hot. Mm-hmm. And I had this whole theory worked up about hot versus cold. Some people, when they get tired, get hot. Mm-hmm. And I think you and I are both that way. Some people, when they get tired, they get cold. Yeah, I don't know if I get hot or cold when I get tired. I know that if the room's too hot, I can't sleep. Yeah. And that that hot is like, you know, maybe I do get hot because like, it can be a normal, like this temperature, which is a nice ambient temperature, is too hot to sleep in for me. Yeah. I don't like it. It's very uncomfortable. Like I sleep with ice packs on all the time. Yeah, wild. I know that there's like temperature control sheets and stuff. 
Right. But that's the thing. I want the bed to be cozy, but I want this, the room to be cold. <laughs> that's right. I don't want any part of me to be cold. <laughs> if my nose is cold, I'm not going to make up for it by having, you know, uh, sweaty thighs <laughs> in, in my own bed. Sure. You, right, like, I mean, I get that. I just want everything to be room temperature year round. Honestly, I could sleep with a window cracked in the middle of winter and I'd be so happy. Yeah. I would love that. Yeah. I've seen you do it. Yeah. Like it's the on, best. Like on five degree above zero nights. Mm hmm. It's crazy. Oh, and it feels so good. <laughs> and that's another reason why I like to take a shower too, right when I wake up, because then I go from my nice warm bed to cold, 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 get in the shower, ah, oh, nice and hot. And then you get too hot because I like to, you know, basically you shower do. in the lava of Mordor. You do. <laughs> And then when I get out, it's such a relief. And then my skin gets all nice and tight because it was all opened and stuff from the hot water. And now it's like sealing up because of the cold. Yeah. Have you have you thought about taking, I've got a buddy with an ice bath. He's, you know, I thought about it, but I don't know if I could handle it because I'm such a boob when it comes to water. I don't know if I could either. And I'm really tempted to call him up and say, can I try yours before I get my own? Well, you, and I hear it's really good for you. Like it's supposed to help you lose weight. I guess. Yeah. I, I don't know. Keeps you toit. Mm -hmm. Keeps you toit. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Supposed to help with your like cognitive functioning too. Like it's supposed to make you smarter and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we wouldn't be called IFAF if we didn't talk about the biggest news in Idaho Falls this week. Right. Christopher Tapp found dead, I believe, in a hotel room in Las Vegas. What a tragedy. I'm just heartbroken for this guy, yeah. his family, his friends. Heartbroken. Well, and he just kept getting the shit end of the stick. He really did. You know? If you don't know the story, to catch you up to speed real quick, in 1996, a young lady by the name of Angie Dodge was murdered, and Christopher Tapp was uh, convicted of that two years later in 98. He spent 20, some people saying 21 years in jail. Until they found the real killer. Now, this was one of the first cases, I think, in the world where they used familial DNA mm -hmm. to catch the real killer. Do we know the name of the real killer? I want to say Brian Driggs, but I'm not sure. Oof. That name Brian sounds... Drips. Mm. See, that That's sounds like her murderer's name. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> that sounds terrible, What's but What's the difference does. between tap and drips? Innocence, for one. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, and this guy, and I guess Drips was living in Boise. Oh, wow. You know, not too far, or Meridian area. Like, I kind of can't believe that he got away with it for that long. Certainly, he must have read news articles over the years. Oh, we're, we're opening all these old cold case files now, and we're catching the real criminal here. Mm -hmm. As he's seeing that come across his news feed, every day, I imagine, more than once a day, he's thinking, oh, man, they're going to get me eventually. What's that got to be like? No sympathy for the guy, by the way. No. Um, because, you know, poor Christopher Tapp, 20 years in jail. I mean, the guy did, passed away at 47 years old. So not quite half his life was taken from him by the city of Idaho Falls. Mm -hmm. And then last well, and year- his prime years, too. His, the prime years of his life. Yeah. And it was the Idaho Innocence Project that- um, you know, and I think it was the mother, it was Carol Dodge, the mother of Angie Dodge, wasn't it? Who really championed, and along with Jolyn Thomas and a few other people. That's so awesome. Who really championed, you know, opening this back up, finding mm -hmm. the real killer. And thank goodness we did. Thank goodness he at least saw justice mm -hmm. in his lifetime. Right. Last year, he was awarded $11.7 million from the city of Idaho Falls. And he said, you know, what you would imagine someone in that situation would say is, this doesn't make up for it. No. no amount of money will make up for what I went through. I mean, like, first of all, imagine a poor guy, you know, I think he was 21 when he was convicted, <sighs> looked like he was 15. Ugh. So, you know, I'm, I'm sure he had his run-ins in jail. Mm -hmm. He contracted tuberculosis in jail that wasn't even diagnosed or treated until he got out. Wow. I mean, just the worst. Ugh. The worst Possible case scenario imaginable for this guy. Mm -hmm. So when he got that $11.7 million last year in June of 2022, he said, no amount of money can make up for what I've lost. Mm -hmm. And this will help me to move forward 
in my life. Well, because you can't get a job after that. Not really. I mean... Like, how do you reintegrate into society when you've spent nearly half your life in the system? Right. You know, from your most formative years. And I believe since he's been out, he's been on sort of a speaking circuit. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, maybe not a job, but certainly things to do. Sure. And a cause to champion and promote. Mm -hmm. Well, and knowing that you were in jail and stuff for something you didn't commit, like, at least if you were in jail for a crime you committed, then you're not paranoid at, like... Everything you have and you've built being taken away from you for no reason. Because yeah. that's what happened to him. That's exactly he, what happened. He didn't do anything wrong and everything was taken from him. And that's why I think that someone like that would have a really hard time reintegrating into society because he sees that it doesn't matter if he's good or if he's morally upstanding or not. It can still be taken from him legally. Right. And I can't imagine what that feeling must be like, I was friends with him on Facebook. I, I watched him get engaged. I watched him get married. Mm -hmm. And that's another tragic part of this story. His wife, now, they were going through a divorce. So I don't know. Mm. I don't know what's involved there. You know, as I understand that the timeline was, got out of prison, some time went by, got engaged, got married, got the settlement, then was going through divorce proceedings when his wife, Stacy Marie Tapp, was killed in a car accident oh. three months before he passed away in Las Vegas. Oh, that's sad. So the first story that came out was there was an accident and he uh, received some head trauma and then died from that. And then the second story that came out was the accident was, and here's the part of me that goes, are we sure about that? Um, he slipped on a shoe fell and hit his head on the way down. And that's the injury that he sustained. Took him to the hospital. He died there. I really want more information. Well, yeah. Was well, he with anybody? That's what was I want to know. Was he alone? What was in his bloodstream? Because like, how would And that's know really he... none of my business right. now. But at least it would explain it. Right. Like if he was inebriated when he fell over... Then that would explain, like, especially if he was like drunk, for example, that would explain how a head a head injury like that could kill him. Yeah. Because his his blood would be so thin, he could bleed out a lot faster. That sort of thing. And maybe, yeah, and maybe you know? he didn't have the the capacity. But I mean, blunt force trauma to what? And where on the head? The back of the head, right? Like, and and I, I'm going to apply Occam's razor here. Mm -hmm. That's we were actually just talking about this a couple of shows ago. We were, yeah. You said. Um, if you hear hooves, don't think zebra, think horses. Occam's razor basically states that the simplest explanation is usually the correct one. Mm -hmm. But I know that there's going to be people saying, well, he was in Vegas with $11 million and then died in a, I, I don't want to say mysterious fashion, because mm -hmm. we let's say we've got all the facts. That's what happened. Mm -hmm. He slipped on a shoe and hit his head and died. But it... You know who's going to have a heyday with this are the true crime podcasters. Right. And just the conspiracy theorists in general. What a tragedy. You know, uh, you hear about people living a charmed life. Mm -hmm. He just lived a tragic life. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, I'm so sad about it. I know several people who are close to him and it breaks my heart for them. Yeah. And, and he, at least he left a legacy. Right. You know, along with the Innocence Project, he was a big champion of... Idaho's wrongful conviction law, mm -hmm. where, you know, people now, if if they are wrongfully convicted and then that conviction is overturned, they're now comp victims are these victims are compensated by the state. Right. And I think that's so important. And I think it that, is. Well, I think that it forces people to have to do their job well. Exactly. Investigators have got to be have got to be more locked on. We've right. got to have better rules about evidence. And you know, now with DNA, I know we already do. You know, mm -hmm. the, it's not like the problem has already been solved, but kind of. It definitely helps. This is one reason why I, I can't support the death penalty. Not because I don't believe that there are crimes that aren't worthy of being killed for. I do, genuinely. But the thing is, there are too many circumstances where people are wrongfully convicted, you know, who end up on death row, who some are exonerated and some are not. Right. And the thing is, until that number zero, I just can't justify condemning a potentially innocent person to death, you know, which sucks. But I think that if there's like, you know, evidence that cannot possibly be disproven, 
Like, if we see this person on a video committing the entire crime, they say their name and their social security number, and also they split their wrists open and leave a ton of blood DNA at the scene, and they say, ha you can check that later uh, against my cousin, and yeah. then <laughs> and then that's how we catch him. I was going to say, you need DNA <laughs> because of all the deep fakes now. Right. And all the AI-created videos. You've got yeah. celebrities suing companies now because they're placing those celebrities in their ads. Right. It's insane. Like, I I don't mm-hmm. even know what to believe anymore. Yeah. The old expression used to be, don't believe anything you hear and only half of what you see. Right. And now it's like, don't believe what you see or hear. Well, how am I supposed to make a informed decision on anything? Right. So Christopher Tapp, Godspeed. I hope that the next life treats you better than this one. Maybe his life before this was just like really, really baller. <laughs> And I hope his next one is too. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, one of my new favorite accounts on Instagram is the There I Ruined It guy. Yes. You know, the, I, I've told you before, he's got Hank Williams mm-hmm. singing the lyrics to Straight Out of Compton. And it sounds believable. It really does. Like that's, it's cool and it's scary. And what are you going to do? Yeah. He's got a couple of different Johnny Cash ones that sound just like Johnny Cash. Yeah. It's freaky. And it's all AI simu- simulated. All I, of it's fake. I love it when he sings the line or generated from a group called Fellers with Attitude. <laughs> it's like, yep, that's how he would sing it. You yeah, know? It makes sense. Wow. All right. Well, moving on to more lighthearted subject matter. Mm-hmm. I don't think I could ever be a newscaster. It's hard to yeah. switch gears. Well, it doesn't help that we don't have like someone to throw the weather, like throw to the weather, right. you know, and then come yeah. back so we can reset. By the way, sp- and speaking now we're of, go with the weather. <laughs> speaking of other media and how useless it is mm-hmm. these days, <laughs> there's actually you know how okay you know the expression. Whenever you're having a bad day, just remember that there's a guy from your hometown still trying to become a rapper. Yep. <laughs> Whenever you're having a bad day, remember there's a guy out there whose entire business model is an email newsletter that starts with the weather. Oof. If you if you want to know the weather, what do you do? Uh, look at your app on your phone. You open the weather app. Now I love the weather guy mishaps that happen. Yeah, you know, like when they're yeah. wearing something that matches the green screen somehow. Yeah, uh, or the ones that or the are... graphics go bonky. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> or the ones where they're outside and like something happens yeah. like have you seen that one where the guy gets hit with the stop sign yeah oh my gosh i feel so bad for him yeah, and terrible. also what sadist was like you know what we should do let's put our weather guy who wore a nice suit to work today in gale outside. force winds yeah hurricane winds cat right. five like cows blowing over you know right Anti-M. <laughs> Anti-M in a rocker. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like, I just want to know, who was it that first did that? And how much did he just hate the weather guy? Like, was the weather guy sleeping with his wife? Right. Is that what happened? That's He's going to have to assume. zip his jacket up around a telephone pole. <laughs> Screw that guy. That guy can go to hell. There, I said it too. I love it. Well, hi, welcome to the go to hell episode, <laughs> where everything we don't like can go to hell. <laughs> Um, okay. I'm getting a kick out of, uh-huh. and, and I'm, this is the last time I'm going to rub it in a little bit about how, you know, we were kind of like, well, when do we go Christmassy at IFAF? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, November one, baby. <laughs> and you're like, no, after Thanksgiving, I'm right. getting kind of a kick out of everything in Idaho Falls this week is Christmas. I know. Including the Festival of Trees. It's at the Elks Lodge. It goes uh, through this Friday, November 17th. Mm -hmm. Uh, The theme is A Country Christmas. Oh, wow. So I really need to go that Go to that one then. Yes, you do. Yeah. You know, I really think I might have to get myself some cowboy boots. And just, (laughs) okay, last episode, you you were excited about buying cowboy boots and an all pink (laughs) snowsuit. So you've got some shopping to do. I do. (laughs) You didn't do the alcohol and ambient and Amazon thing we talked about? No, no, I thought that'd be a bad, like they say on the bottle not to mix them. I mean, it's like I care about my body or something, even though I'll fill it with sugar and candy all day long. (laughs) Oh, man. Hey, we haven't, we haven't crashed yet. I haven't, I haven't felt the sugar crash yet from the kids. Oh, I have, but good for you. Okay. All right. (laughs) But to be fair, I've also been working all day and I'm dehydrated. I have not had enough water. Water break, hydration break. There we go. Maybe you need one too, if you're listening. 
So anyway, it's through this Friday, so we really won't have any footage for you until it's all over. But we'll go get some. Right. So if you can't go, but it's like five bucks a person, 20 bucks for a family. And they really do pack it full of entertainment. There's mm-hmm. always, you know, a little kid's choir or mm-hmm. some dancers. Uh, my buddy William Talbot's going to be there. I'm in, he's in this radio play that we're doing for the yes. holidays. I won't talk mm-hmm. about it this episode, but next episode, I'll yeah, tee you up for this. You know what? I'm okay with getting full Christmassy next episode. I okay. will concede. And have, have you seen the, um, some smart ass on the internet, which I love, <laughs> put, um, put two, calendars together for one for November, one for December and said, let me explain this to you guys. <laughs> for everybody who's saying that celebrating Christmas takes away from Thanksgiving, here's Christmas. And he circles all of November except Thanksgiving, the fourth <laughs> Thursday in November. Oh, and I think I think he's generous. He does the day before and then Thanksgiving and then the day after, even Black Friday. Mm-hmm. That's all Thanksgiving. Which really is when everyone's going Christmas shopping. <laughs> right. And then he circles so if anything, everything I else. Think and Black says, Friday should be included in Christmas. This is Christmas. Here, I'll I'll be generous in giving this this <laughs> holiday season, uh-huh. Carl. Um, I really feel like Thanksgiving is the Wednesday because let's face it, no one, literally no if your boss makes you work all the way to four fifty nine or five oh one PM on a Wednesday before Thanksgiving, mm-hmm. you should change jobs. <laughs> Because no one's thinking about work at that point, right? You know, they're there's you got to prep half the meal the night before anyway. Mm -hmm. Some of the stuff tastes better if the casserole, the flavors marry. Mm -hmm. So the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, that Thursday, and then the entire next three days, Black Friday, Small Business Saturday, and whatever Mm -hmm. Sunday is. Yeah, that whole five is that six days? One, two, three. For five days. <laughs> <laughs> Something like Thank that. You. Oh, and then Carly Cyber, was doing this. And then Cyber Monday. I wouldn't count that. You got to count Cyber Monday. No, because you're back at work. You do Cyber Monday at work. That's like a, true. Like That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Boss makes a dollar. I make a dime. That's why I shop on company time. Whatever. That's funny. <laughs> okay. But yeah, the, like so Christmas, November 1 through mm-hmm. December 31st. Right. Oh, and since we're speaking about it. Mm-hmm. Did you know that the last day of December this year will be one two three one two three? Oh yeah, the last day of the year, which I thought was so fun. <laughs> and also, can I just um throw this out there? I think we should just move Thanksgiving to the second Thursday of November instead, instead of the fourth, because four is it's way too far down. I love it. You know, I abs- I'm all for it. Let's get rid of daylight saving time and yes. make Thanksgiving make Thanksgiving the second. Thursday. Right. Because then you still have one Thursday in November to be like, oh, crap, is it Thanksgiving? And it's not, and you'll feel relief. But then the second one will be. Especially for us who live in the northern, northern hemisphere. Right. Because by the end of November, it's winter. It's Christmas time. What is Thanksgiving? It's a harvest festival. Lots of cultures have them and have for thousands of years. Right. Right. And we're harvesting early November. We, yeah. Yeah. Like we've already hard done harvested. So yeah, I don't see why we don't just move Thanksgiving up a little bit to accommodate more time for Christmas and then no more argument. Brilliant. Then we don't have to fight. Whoosh. We are solving all the world's problems. <laughs> yeah. What's up next? <laughs> well, next we solve world hunger and tell no one. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we'll get a little help from Elon Musk. <laughs> Didn't he promise to solve world hunger for $6 billion? I thought he did. But then he spent $44 billion on Twitter. So, you know, some things. Are, right. And I don't know how much it costs to send that uh, Tesla to Mars. But okay. Okay. <sighs> Anyway, the Festival of Trees goes on through this Friday at the Elks Lodge. All the proceeds to, uh, benefit the Development Workshop, which is a great cause. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. You know, I always really liked the Festival of Trees growing up because I was in ballroom uh, throughout high school. So you perform there every so year. So I perform there a lot. Okay. Yeah, and then even after high school, I did acrobatics for a minute and we'd perform for that too, you know, just because why not? It's, and uh, yeah, it's fun. They do. They really pack it full of performances. Mm-hmm. And it's just going to get more Christmassy. This Saturday, November 18th, they're starting the Trolley Rides. It's a horse-drawn little trolley. I think it seats like multiple people. I'm not sure how many. Looks like uh, maybe up to a dozen. Mm -hmm. And they're going to run it. So this Saturday, 3 to 5. And then November 25th through December 23rd, 1 to 3. Oh, we got to do that. Right? We just have to. That that seems kind of cool. I'll wear my fancy coat. The ice skating rink in between is it? It's Lucy's or the Ribbon Chop House and Lucy's uh-huh. Pizza and Smoke and Fins. 
It's called the Broadway Plaza, right? Uh-huh. They're putting up an ice skating rink there, and there's a couple others in town. Mm-hmm. Uh, the one on the in the Broadway Plaza uses synthetic ice. Which is so cool. Yeah, they were just setting it up this past weekend, mm-hmm. I believe. And so, yeah, synthetic ice works better or something. I'm Which, not sure. It has to. And it's you know? free, so I'm sure, you know, get there early. There's going to be a line. You know, if I give you my skates, will you get them sharpened for me? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Who does that in town? Uh, the hockey rink. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'll just go down to the hockey rink. Yeah. Yeah. Have them sharpen the skates. That would be awesome because I I kept meaning to do that last year and I never had time. Could I just use my uh, kitchen knife? Um, <laughs> you probably you could, it, but I have. Considering I'm putting my life in these skates' hand, <laughs> I think I'd, I I think I'd like to know that they're done professionally. And then the uh, so the Christmas tree lighting. Now here's where I get confused because I thought that the lighting usually happened. There's a big Christmas tree at Civitan Plaza Mm -hmm. um, on the corner of Park and B, downtown Mm -hmm. right across from Himalayan Flavor. Yes. Which, by the way, if you haven't tried that and you love Tandoori (sighs) Oven, go to Himalayan Flavor and uh, compare, because I'd love to know your notes on that. Mm -hmm. I loved Himalayan Flavor. Me too. I feel like they have a more authentic flavor. And Tandoori Oven's one of my favorite restaurants in town. I really do like Tandoori Oven a lot too. But I think that uh, Himalayan flavor gets it just a little spicier. More flavorful. Yeah. 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 It was really great. So So good. they're They're doing a Christmas tree lighting, but they say, what I read was it's on Memorial. Oh. So is that different than Civitan Plaza? But anyway, it happens at six o'clock if you're in that general area. Mm Mm-hmm. And then, of course, we have to go see the 20th anniversary screening of Napoleon Dynamite. So that's right. just going to be a oh, big it's day. Be so cool, man! Yeah. I need to get my costume together. Crap, I haven't done that yet. This Saturday, the trolley ride starts. The ice skating rink opens, and the and the Christmas tree lighting for ice skating that'll happen Fridays four to seven and Saturdays one to seven, November 18th through January 13th. Oh, nice! And I wonder why they don't take it even further. Like up until, like, yeah, val- like wouldn't Valentine's Day be a nice Valentine's culmination? Day would be nice. Yeah. Yeah. You know what that would be? Kind of picture a romantic. Maybe it's too warm by then and it's too expensive to Not cool. here. Yeah. I mean, that's usually when it's still pretty cold. That's true. You remember this past winter, la- it seemed to last at least through oh, St. Patty's Day, maybe so even Easter. It was a lot. <laughs> I remember, like, we had snow finally melting one week. Mm hmm. And the trees were already blooming. Right. I think, like, or at least a week later. I know that, yeah, I know Easter was still a little cold this year, but the kids were still able to go out and Easter hunt, Easter egg hunt. Right. So, oh. Either way, it feels like it lasts so long. That's one thing I'm not really looking forward to with the winter, because honestly, I don't feel like I got to do all of the summer activities that I like. I didn't get to spend the time outdoors that we usually get to during the summer. So it just feels like it's going to be so hard to get back into that, you know, Uh, and have it taken even more away. Maybe I'm just old and patient, (laughs) but I know that there's going to... In fact, I kind of have this theory that nature just teaches us a (laughs) cycle of birth and death and renewal and... You know, there's always going to be next year. Yeah. Yeah. But also you had a full summer this year. I was working retail. So I was working all day long on all of the nice warm summer days and especially the Saturdays. As we talk about these things happening primarily in downtown, it's so I I look forward to it. I love the string of lights, even Mm -hmm. in the summer that they put across the street on park. It just sort of remember we were I don't maybe we were at the Celt one night or something, but walking back to our car Mm -hmm. and it was this. Still, quiet, winter's night Uh with the soft white flakes. And you know, something happens to the sound in the air. You feel more encased or enclosed Mm -hmm. when the clouds are really low. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it just, it was so beautiful and quiet. And then the, the little bright street lights going across park. Mm -hmm. I can't wait for all that again. The one thing I do like about living here in Idaho Falls is that we almost always have a white Christmas. Yes. Oh, I did go to, we'll leave you with this. I went to the Ryder Park Sled Hill this week just to check it out. Uh I mean, it looks amazing. And it goes up, what? I don't know, 30 feet 
There's the sled hill and in relation to the Snake River Landing sign. And then did you know, I knew they had one pond there. They built another pond. You'd mentioned this that. This summer. So there's two ponds now. Which is so smart. You see a little bit of snow in this video. That snowmaking equipment is going to be up and running the week of Thanksgiving. Right. All in time for your family that's coming to town to actually enjoy some of what Idaho Falls has to offer. That's our show. Have a great week. See you next time on IFAF.